Have you ever heard of circuit bending? It's okay if you haven't. It's kind of an obscure term. But essentially, there's a whole community of people out there who collect electronic children's toys, dismantle them, mess around with their circuitry, adding switches, knobs, and LED lights, and manipulate them to create bizarre, glitched-out sounds for their own enjoyment. Some circuit benders use this technique to create glitched-out lo-fi electronic music, while others are satisfied with creating creepy noises and Frankenstein-like plastic creations just for the hell of it. Well, you might be wondering what this has to do with Furbies. Well, those wide-eyed, impish creatures that made waves back in the 90s haven't been totally forgotten. In fact, we wouldn't be surprised if those owl-like animatronic monstrosities aren't still the subject of some of your nightmares. If you find them unsettling, you're about to be totally freaked out by what UK musician Sam Battle conjured up when he combined his fascination with the fuzzy fellas with his love for circuitry and soldering. The Furby Organ Sam Battle runs the YouTube channel Look Mum No Computer, and for years he'd been thinking about the possibility of a Furby organ. Apparently he wasn't allowed to have a Furby when he was a kid, and this obnoxious project stems from that unresolved resentment. Although when asked by Vice News why he created the Furby organ, he simply replied with, why not? Which is as fair of an answer to that question as anything else. He had been collecting the little automatons for years, and back in 2018, he decided it was finally time to put his knowledge of circuitry and music to use. By connecting 44 Furbies to small microcontrollers, he was able to sync all the toys together to a MIDI-controlled keyboard designed to look like an organ. It took weeks of late nights, caffeine, and solder, but after stripping all the Furbies of their skins and tinkering with their insides, he was able to finally realize his long-standing dream. With a flip of a switch, all of the ominous little beasts come to life and grumble their incoherent gibberish. Each Furby is assigned to a specific note. With a stroke of a key on the keyboard, the designated Furby opens up its little beak and chirps out a voweled tone. The end result may be one of the weirdest and most unnerving and unnecessary instruments to ever be crafted, but you gotta give him points for creativity. Over 5 million viewers have seen his creation, and in 2019, he developed a smaller, portable version of the Furby organ to take on tour. He'd even be invited to give a TED Talk because of his Furby fame. Sam is a lover of all things analog, hence the name of his YouTube channel. Some of his other creations include synths that employ an army of Nintendo Game Boys and Sega Genesis consoles. If you're into that kind of thing, you should check out his channel. Speaking of which, make sure you subscribe to ours and give this video a like. But don't go anywhere so fast, because we're about to take a closer look at the fascinating history of the Furby. Way back in 1998. Some of you probably weren't even born yet in 1998. So for all of you, this will be more of a history lesson than anything. You might not get what life was like before social media and infinite streaming content, but it certainly was entirely different. You see, back then kids weren't playing Minecraft and Roblox, cell phones were shaped like candy bars, and all they did was make phone calls and send messages. And there was no YouTube. So, in 1998, a new toy came on the scene and took the world by storm. The Furby was the culmination of the hard work and dedication of three people who sincerely thought the world would benefit from these mogwai-looking, nonsensical, gibberish gerbils. If you're looking to blame anyone for the Furby, then David Hampton, Caleb Chung, and Richard C. Levy should be the targets of your ire. Hampton did an interview with the New York Times in 98. He explained he grew up tinkering with electronics in his home state of Michigan. He'd help his neighbors by fixing their broken TVs and radios. When he was 13, he got his first job at a TV repair shop. It was around this same time that he built a homemade ham radio. After graduating high school in 1970, he enlisted in the Navy so he could study electronics. He spent eight years serving his country while learning all about aviation electronics, doing a lot of traveling, and learning several languages, such as Japanese, Chinese, Hebrew, and Thai. After he was discharged from the military, he worked several jobs in Silicon Valley. It was while working at Mattel he met Caleb Chung. Eventually, he started his own design and consulting firm and invited Chung to come work with him. Chung hadn't received any formal training in electronics, but he was incredibly creative and had no fear thinking outside the box. Inspired by it's not surprising the Furby was actually inspired by the Tamagotchi. When Hampton and Chung were at a trade show in New York in 97, they saw the virtual pet in action for the first time, and both agreed it was a super cool idea. But Hampton had one problem. You couldn't pet it. So Chung and Hampton immediately got to work improving upon its design. They wanted to recreate the virtual pet experience with something that was more tangible. The original name they came up with for their new pettable creation was the Furball, and it spoke in a hodgepodge of various words and syllables from the languages Hampton learned while he was in the Navy. Entered Richard C. Levy 
So after coming up with a prototype of their creation, they had to figure out how to license the concept. That's when Hampton and Chung brought in Richard Levy. His alma mater was Emerson College in Boston, but he hadn't majored in electronics. Levy had made a name for himself promoting feature films over the course of several decades. He had promoted over 30 films for Paramount before starting his own production company. Although it wasn't long before he was asked to join the Senior Executive Service, where he played a part in designing the WorldNet satellite network. Despite having a full professional life, in his free time, he enjoyed inventing things like games and toys. Having a history of marketing and inventing made him a prime candidate to help Hampton and Chung out with their Furby project. Thanks to him, the trio was able to strike a licensing agreement with Tiger Electronics in 1997. Not long after that deal was made, Hasbro acquired Tiger. Hasbro was much more generous with their resources, and the development of the Furby quickly was completed. It launched in October of 1998, just in time for the Christmas shopping season. FAO Schwartz in New York ordered 35,000 of the little fuzzy units, and it was off to the races from there. By the end of 98, almost 2 million Furbies had been sold. By the end of 1999, 14 million Furbies had been sold, and even though they only cost $35 at the store, shortages led to resellers scalping them to desperate consumers for hundreds of dollars. By the end of the century, over 40 million Furbies had been sold. The End of the Furby Era You can't really expect any fad to last longer than a couple of years. Just look at fidget spinners. Need I say more? Well, the Furby followed the same pattern. Hasbro came out with dozens of different varieties of the Furby, and that inevitably led to an oversaturated market. In 2005, a new and improved version of the doll was released, but it sold poorly. Consumers had moved on. At that time, webkins were all the rage, and Furbies were collecting dust in closets and secondhand stores. Once the Furby madness had subsided, people started to take notice of the fact that Furbies are actually kind of creepy. It was the very thing that made Furbies so cool that also drove people away. They seemed as if they were alive. They'd talk to you. They were needy. They seemed to be always evolving, thinking, and watching. In 2012, an updated Furby was released that expanded upon the original design. This new Furby could be synced up with a smartphone. The personality changes this new Furby was capable of were quite extensive. And for the first time, owners could translate their furry little friend's gibberish into their native tongue. This new model, despite its hefty $54 price tag, sold quite well. In 2013, the scaled-down Furby Party Rocker and expanded Furby Boom was released. The latter had been updated with more content, personalities, pattern designs, and an expanded immersive app experience. The Boom was capable of remembering its name and the name of its friends. 2014 saw the release of the Furblings, baby Furbies that could interact with the Furby Boom. The most extensive update to the Furby experience came in 2016. Furby Connect has much more expressive eyes and a broader range of movements. Its app connectivity allows users to connect to a whole virtual world to interact with. Furby owners can watch videos, play games, and interact with other Furbies. New content is constantly being released and available to download, and it's still available for purchase today. Of course, if you want to get your hands on a Furby Connect, you're going to have to shell out between $60 and $150 depending on the color and model. The original Furby still has a thriving fan base. If you're thinking about getting your hands on a little bit of 90s nostalgia, or if you're considering building your own Furby organ, they still sell for about 40 bucks on eBay. Do you think Furbies are cute, or do you find them kind of creepy? We'd love to hear what you think in the comments section. And before you move on, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more. Tap the bell icon to turn on notifications so you never miss another video.